A panel of 13 judges are spending two days sipping, slipping, sniffing, coughing their way through over a thousand different wines and New World's Wine Awards in Wellington. The competition is in its 11th year, prides itself on being consumer focused. More on the awards. We're joined by Jim Watts, who's live in Wellington with the judging panel chair, Jim Hare. Hey, good morning, Simon. From the Wine Awards, um, Chief Judge is with me, Jim Harray. Jim has been uh, a wine connoisseur, judge in New Zealand and around the world for the past 20 years, so a fairly well-established palate, Jim. Yeah, it's one of those things that sort of creeps up on you. You know, you think you'll do it for, for a little while and then suddenly you find that uh, times just flash by and you end up in a, in a competition like this, which is uh, you know, brilliant to be here. So welcome to the New World Wine Awards. Great. I want to ask you, all the wines have to be below $25. Are we selling wine too cheap in New Zealand? It's a really good question, and, and I'm not sure how you define too cheap. I mean, obviously, if you're buying something for $5 or $6 a bottle, I'm always surprised that somebody can produce a wine for that. But 70% of wine that's produced in New Zealand, or sorry, 70% of wine that's sold in New Zealand is under $25. And so competitions like this are sort of set up to, to look at what the main market of the wine is and finding the really good um, purchases that you can get, um, looking at producing gold medal wines and, and silver medal wines in that price range. So concept of whether it's too cheap, um, I always think if you can find a gold medal wine that's gold medal by international standards at uh, under $25 and particularly around $17 or $18, that's just really canny buying, not, not too cheap in my book. Yep. Right. Um, and now you are here, you're the head judge of, uh, with 12 other judges. What, what kind of things are you looking for? How do you, how do you judge wine? Because obviously you guys aren't swallowing it or you might be a bit you know, trash by the end of the day. <laughs> you certainly couldn't get through. These guys will judge around about 120 wines during the day. So really my role is just to make sure that there's um, continuity between the panels, that um, the, the gold medals that we're uh, awarding and silver medals and bronze medals are consistent across the board, um, and to make sure that, uh, that things are, uh, are running, running really smoothly. But, I mean, they're really experienced judges. These are the same guys that judge in all the major competitions in New Zealand, so there's not a lot I really have to do. Don't tell them that. <laughs> How, how do you, sorry, how do you keep, I mean, you're sampling so many different wines, how do you not let your palate get affected? How do you kind of maintain a, a healthy palate amount, uh, throughout the day? Palate fatigue is something that you, you really look for, and it's, it's a matter of concentrating uh, really carefully when, you, when you're looking at the wines. But there's all sorts of tricks you can use, like every 10 or 15 uh, wines stop, swirl your mouth out with some water. Um, obviously, you're spitting the wines out, so you're not swallowing them, and, and that's, you know, that's really important in terms of, of maintaining an accurate um, um, edge, because basically the wines that you're judging at the end of the day, you should be as accurate and as consistent with the wines that you're judging at the start of the day. And in terms of, I mean, you tasting a few uh, more acidic wines, what about uh, the danger of tooth decay, I dare say, or a healthy show? Well, I mean, the thing is that, um, you know, dentists, if you go into a dentist and you say, look, I'm a, I'm a wine judge, they immediately book themselves a holiday to Tahiti or somewhere expensive, you know, because it is hard on your teeth. But, um, again, by rinsing your mouth out with lots of water, and the main thing is not to clean your teeth for a couple of hours because you've softened the enamel. But there's a whole range of different wines that you're looking at, so, and each wine has its own issues. So if you're looking at Syrah, for example, you've got some, some big tannins with that, so um, it's the build-up of tannin in your mouth that's, uh, that's, that's interesting, uh, that you have to deal with. If you're dealing with, say, sparkling wines, um, then you know that's another one that uh, there's high acid. Uh, this year, for the very first time, we're looking at uh, wines which are uh, reduced alcohol. And um, it's not a class that, that any competition has ever judged at before. The consumers have said to us, hey, this is something we want to know at. And so the group that's judging that, I'm going to be interested to hear what issues they had in terms of, of judging those wines, whether there was anything that came up in that. Brilliant, great. Jim, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, Simon, so they've already done half the judging. They're going to finish today, and then the uh, wine awards will be announced in September. Jim, thanks very much. Looking forward to those results.